Today I'm talking about Leonardo. It is a newish painting app for Windows. Got a lot of potential, it's doing a lot of things right, so let's take a look. Ah, Leonardo, like the Ninja Turtle. Uh, no. The app, like the turtle, was named after the painter, Leonardo da Vinci. Good to see you again, Leonardo buddy. So the real question here is, does the world really need another painting app? I may be biased, but I say, uh, yeah, it does. I think what Leonardo does well is that it works really, really well on a tablet. I have an older Surface Pro. Most of the drawing and painting apps I use are optimized to be used with a keyboard. They don't all, like, need a keyboard, but they're a lot faster, more streamlined when you're using one. And yeah, I know there's a lot of on-screen shortcut apps. I've used those. I like some of them. But there's something to be said for apps that are rethought from the ground up to be used with touch screens instead of just like tacking on touch features after the fact. And I think that's why I like Leonardo. It reminds me a little bit of Sketchable. Sketchable is a Windows app and it was created from the ground up to be used on Windows tablets. I just like the ability to fold back my keyboard and really dive into the drawing experience. Get that out of the way. It's just nice and fun to use really. So the drawing that I am making in the background of this video it took a little less than two hours and the really nice thing about it is I never had to reach around to like pull my keyboard up and when I do that it feels a lot more like drawing and having fun and a lot less like work so if I was gonna describe Leonardo in a nutshell I'd say it falls somewhere in between sketchable and say your traditional desktop app at first glance it looks and feels more like the traditional desktop apps that you're used to got your tools on the sidebar and then you have your options along the top and if you're using this with a traditional setup like say with a keyboard and a Wacom type tablet it probably doesn't feel all that new or interesting. But if you're using something like Photoshop or Clip Studio on your tablet PC and then you switch over to this, you're going to notice the difference right away. Little things like brush resizing is just a matter of like tapping and sliding back and forth on an icon to make your brush bigger or smaller. Instead of tapping on a little area and then manually entering the size of the brush you need or hitting the brush size down keyboard shortcut 47 times. Also the brushes have auto smoothing built right in. In fact, as I was watching the tutorial videos, the developer specifically said that he added line smoothing in because it works better with and Drake pens. How refreshing is that to see a developer who actually understands the technology that's coming out right now that he is developing for. There's some other cool stuff in here too. Like the line tool lets you draw straight lines without using a shift key. You can also jump in there, set it to any angle you want to draw at. There's a little ruler tool in here too, so if you want lines that are about the same length, you've got that. There's even a built-in perspective guide, and I love this, a little isometric tool. Even though I didn't need the keyboard shortcuts, the app does include a little on-screen keyboard shortcut thing for your convenience. There's also some other interesting tweaks that make this app kind of cool. The first is the infinite canvas. This is great for sketching. If you sketch something out and you finish one idea, you just pan over to the side a little bit, you start sketching out the next one. You could literally do that forever, or at least until your computer runs out of RAM. You can also define a canvas size, which is nice for finished artwork. Since I was creating a finished piece of art, I really wanted to just know what kind of canvas size I was dealing with. But I could see myself sketching with the infinite canvas. Also, the gradient has a preview, so you can actually see where the gradient is going and exactly how it'll look before you actually lay it down. That was cool. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I hope other app makers steal that because it's really handy. The brushes in general are fairly customizable. They aren't super deep, but they cover all the basics. And this seems like an area of focus over the last couple updates for this app is adding in new brushes and adding in new functionality there. So what are the cons? Well, this is still a very new app. In fact, it's still in beta. And because it's so new, it doesn't have a lot of the other features that you might be used to in some of the other drawing apps that you use. The one thing that I really personally miss was some kind of paint bucket tool. I ended up spending a lot of time on my background drawing here, coloring in my shapes by hand. I know a lot of you watching are gonna miss things like text tools, those aren't in there, or any kind of vector shapes, anything like that. The other thing that would have come in really handy for what I'm doing is like a better selection tool. Right now, all of the selection tools are manual. You have to draw the shapes in yourself. There's no auto selections. The interface itself looks modern, sleek, looks really nice. There's even some nice animated touches here and there that make it look cool. But there is one one little bit of the interface, that, that sleek interface that gets in the way, and that is your color picker, the swatch that shows up at the top of the screen. It looks cool as an interface element, but it's actually hard to tell what shade of color you've actually picked. It'd be nice if this was just a solid color with no gradient on it. Sometimes I think I have the right color, but it comes out a little too light or comes out a little darker than I expected it to. It also messes with my sense of vibrancy. All of my colors came out a little more vibrant than I wanted them to. Another addition that'd be 
be really cool to see in the color picker is some way to see the old color that you had, comparing it directly next to the new color that you're picking. That way, if I want to shade this just a touch lighter, I can see those things next to each other. The developer has been adding a lot to this app. In fact, when I started this process, I just sat down, booted up the app, and started drawing. And I didn't stop to think that it's been several months since I actually updated the app. A lot has changed. So it's kind of cool to download the new app and see everything that had changed and everything that's been added in just in the few months since I downloaded it. I can see some big leaps forward just looking at the brushes and the auto smoothing and some of the new features they've added just in that area alone. So currently Leonardo is Windows only, but it is coming to the Mac. I think this works great on Windows. I think one of its greatest strengths is the fact that it works so well on touch screens. The fact that I could just fold away my keyboard and just draw. I think a lot of people when they use this on the Mac are just gonna see another drawing app, but it'll still be nice to see it on another platform. Overall, I had fun with Leonardo. Like, actual fun. I can't say that about using all drawing apps on the Surface. So there is a 14 day free trial, so if you wanna go and check it out on a Windows tablet, go ahead, check it out yourself. Let me know what you think down below in the comments, or if you have any questions, anything that I didn't cover that'd be worth knowing, let me know down there. And of course, as always, if you like this video, found it helpful in any way, hit the like button, it helps other people find it. And of course, subscribe for more videos in the future. That's all I've got for today, guys. I'll talk to you guys later.